In this exercise, I'm going to show how to track horizons using inversion. Traditional trackers follow amplitude and phase. However, unconformities do not exhibit consistent amplitude phase behavior and can thus not be tracked with a conventional tracker. The inversion tracker flattens the deep field using a constrained inversion based algorithm. Constraints are given in the form of picked positions and optionally a confidence weight volume. In this exercise, I'm going to track two horizons. First one, will be constrained by a few manually picked positions, and the next one is going to be constrained by well markers. Let's begin and preload the default seismic data set. For this, go to Survey, Preload, Seismic Data, click on Load Cube button, and the default data set is already pre-selected as an input cube, so click OK to preload it, and close to close the preloading window. Now let's add a default inline and open the track using inversion window. This can be done by right-clicking on 3D horizon item in the tree, new track using inversion. In the inversion tracking window, I'm going to select the two steering BG detailed steering cube, but you can select any other steering cube which is not heavily smoothed. Optionally, you can also limit the volume subselection and change the name of the point set and the output horizon, or leave this by default. I'm going to put this window aside and switch my cursor to interaction mode and I'm going to find an event that I'm going to track. Click on the peak seats icon, your cursor becomes a cross, and I'm going to pick a few seats on this blue event. If you want to remove a seat, you can hold the control key and click on this seat. Optionally, we can pick more points on inlines and cross lines, or alternatively, open an existing peak set with interpreted points by clicking on the corresponding open point set icon. Now, if I only wanted to track just one horizon, I could click Run and see the results. But I'm going to add a second horizon from well markers. For this, I'm going to press on the from wells icon and select FS7 marker from all the wells and click OK. This adds a second horizon. I'm going to check the processing parameters. We have quite a few of them here with the default parameters that we selected from extensive testing. You can click on the info icons to read about all the parameters. I'm not going to change anything here and close the window. Now let's click Run to start processing our horizons. When the batch process is finished, you can close the window and add new horizons to the tree. They were called surface constraint by constraint 1 and surface constraint by FS7. I can filter them by typing the first couple of letters and add them to the tree. I'm going to minimize the unconformity tracker window for the moment and see how our horizons look like. You can also display them on LED sections by clicking the V shortcut on your keyboard or going to 
display on that sections. I'm going to move my inline back and forth. I'm also going to switch to the grayscale color bar so I can see my horizons better. And maybe also change the amplitudes a bit. As you can see, these horizons were produced just from a few constraints and very quickly you can get quite decent results. At any time you can make improvements to your horizons by adding more peaks or adding a confidence weight volume or by changing the inversion parameters. For this, simply bring back the inversion tracker window, click on the horizon that you want to edit. Make sure that the peak seats icon is on. Zoom in and add more seats where you want your horizons to be constrained. And click run to rerun your process. This concludes the workflow showing how to track horizons using inversion tracker.